How is everybody? You all doing well? You all staying safe and calm in these troubled times? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you're looking for some good news, I'm down to one insulation layer. Look, just a, just a hoodie underneath my jacket. So it's the 18th of January. Could we be in for an early spring? Got to look on the bright side. Anyway, I haven't come here to give you a weather report. Today we're on a fantastic walk that I'm really excited about. It's a walk which once again takes us back into the past where the landscape reveals its stories and leads us back to something really quite beautiful and slightly mysterious. We're going to aim for one of the great holy sites of London in a kind of nondescript location. It's kind of hidden away and it's sort of forgotten about and as you know my book is subtitled Adventures in the Overlooked City and this location we're going to today over in Ilford in East London is, uh, is incredibly overlooked as you'll see when we get there and we're going to be led there along a, another kind of forgotten overlooked feature of the landscape a little river called the Aldersbrook and I'm particularly excited today, unnaturally excited, like a kid before Christmas, because the water level in the River Roding is incredibly high at the moment. I was in Wanstead Park a few days ago, and it's like, I'd say it's in some places, it's two metres above where it normally is. So the Alders Brook, the little rivulet, the little brook that I want to find today, when I've been there before, it's just been like a muddy ditch. And in the summer, you can barely see it through the undergrowth. So I'm hoping today, there may be some water in the Alders Brook. So we've got everything today. We've got a lost river. We've got an overlooked, forgotten, ancient holy site. But before we get there, something I found this morning is a prehistoric site here on Wanstead Flats. Yes, you heard me right. A prehistoric site here on Wanstead Flats that I didn't know about before. So that's when we're going to check in on that site on our way to the other side of Wanstead Flats. I wrote in my book that sometimes enlightenment is as likely to be found on the far side of Wanstead Flats as at the end of Route 66. And I think that will be the case today. This is the, the Jubilee Pond here on Wanstead Flats. We've just crossed Lake House Road. And it was over here that there were a couple of trenches that were dug as part of an archaeological investigation. I think it was linked to the, uh, the site of the police depot that was here for the Olympics and perhaps the laying down of pipes for you know, uh, sewage works. And they made some very, very intriguing discoveries running in the direction of the far side there of the ponds towards Sydney Road on the edge of the flats. So a trench was being dug for a pipe across once the flats. I, re I actually remember it taking place. And actually, if we look here, look, there's this kind of gravelly earth here, here, and along here, actually. So this might be, in fact, <laughs> if we look at the land, I think it may tell us what we're looking for. Look, you can see possibly this might be the outline of the trench that was dug. And we can see some lines in the ground. And so the archaeologists are dug into these trenches. And what they found were two ditches. And you might think, well, wow, two ditches, so what? But they concluded that the ditches were very likely of prehistoric origin which is kind of incredible. And they were partly guided to focus on this site, to investigate it further, because there had been some crop marks and a ditched enclosure that was um, of prehistoric origin. And they think that in that period, through the Bronze and the Iron Age, this was an area of uh, agricultural land with ditched enclosures and also 
ritual enclosures. There were ritual enclosures in this landscape here across Wanstead Flats, now famous for its football teams, where Sen Rabend FC, I think, plays, where John Terry and Rio Ferdinand and people like that cut their teeth playing out here. But 4,000 years ago, this was a place of agriculture, of settlement, and of ritual. It's an amazing thought, isn't it? It's an absolutely incredible thought. What also came up in that, uh, in that archaeological report was that they had recovered flint artefacts, flint hand axes and other flint flakes and stuff around this area. More so uh, on the other side around Wanstead Flats and also in Wanstead Park. But Wanstead Flats does remain an area of great archaeological interest. And I've done a number of walks over here and I've been reading about it over the years never come across that before and it was just a paragraph initially in um, the London archaeologist uh, fieldwork roundup for I think uh, for, I think it would have been for 2012 or 2013 there was just a paragraph mentioning that an excavation had taken place did a bit of googling found the report and it just opens up a world of wonder just a world of complete mystery lying on your doorstep I live just not far away it's the other side of Wanstead Flats and here it is look at this bit of gravel along here there were people digging trenches here 4,000 years ago at least, if not longer. Isn't it amazing? We're walking here across a prehistoric landscape. You'd never think, would you? See, there is history everywhere, lying just beneath our feet. But you walk over it every day and sometimes you have no idea what's just lying beneath the ground there, waiting to be uncovered. It's amazing. So our walk, our pilgrimage, really starts on the far side of Wanstead Flats and on the other side of the uncanny suburb of Aldersbrook. We need to head over, we need to head over here. And it says a lot about our walk today that actually the Aldersbrook isn't marked on this map. When you, when you see the flight of the crows and the rooks across Wanstead Flats here, it really reminds me of a, of a wonderful book called The Way of Weird by Brian Bates. Highly recommend it. And in that, he talks about the way that the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon kind of uh, shamans, as he calls them, but I think obviously they would have been like the, I don't know, maybe you'd call them priests, maybe some sort of remnant of the Druid tradition, that they could look at the flight of a crow and foretell future events. It's a really wonderful book. Um, by the way, I'll post a link to the uh, video I made about the Second World War sites on uh, Wanstead Flats. I think I made that in March last year, just before the first lockdown. It's an interesting location behind me there. There's an anti-aircraft gun over there. And that shed where they use, I think the ground staff use it, that was once the kind of quarters for the gunnery, the gunnery teams that were here. They found shrapnel and all sorts over there. But I'll post the link to that video and I go around the various World War II sites on Wanstead Flats. Of Aldersbrook, and of course, it gets its name from the, from the little river we're about to go looking for. I won't go about it too much because uh, I've made a video just about Aldersbrook a number of years ago, and I'll link to that below. And I was through here last summer when I walked on the Cranbrook and talked a bit about the architecture. But it's a fantastic, uncanny, beguiling suburb. It's a kind of late Victorian, early Edwardian temperance suburb. No pub in Aldersbrook. Part of me just can't get past that. <laughs> but it is a really wonderful place. I wonder what secrets are in there. So we go down here, past the site of the old nuclear bunker, 
past the uh, Empress Avenue allotments and past the stables and there we should find the river roading. I really love this little East London country lane. It's a really beautiful place to walk all year round. If you're interested in studying Edgelands, you could, uh, you know, you could come down here. <laughs> it's a good place to stay. I was about to say it's the, the epitome. It's not the epitome, but it's an interesting site because you've got behind me here the remains of the water treatment works, which you'll find on all the old maps going back uh, hmm, around 100 years. And also there was an isolation hospital down here. There was the nuclear bunker back there. Of course, you've got the pylons and the river stables. It's a very uh, interesting landscape. And of course, many of you will already be heading for the comment section to point out Wanstead Park is behind me there and I am going to finally do the kind of more more comprehensive video about Wanstead Park and all its incredible stories and its Roman antiquities and all sorts. I'm hoping though I can get access to um, Wanstead Golf Club, maybe they'll give me access to the golf course there to look at the, the site of Wanstead House which would be Great. So, I don't know, if anyone watching this has got a connection to Wanstead Golf Club and knows who I should speak to, because I don't just want to go wandering around the golf course, even though no one's playing there at the moment. So that's coming up soon, and that, portions of it are flooded at the moment. It's over there, say, about three, four days ago, and it was underwater behind me. So we're going to take... We're going, actually, we're going to come back for that footpath. We're going to go and have a look at the water level in the roading from the bridge up here. So the level of the roading is really quite high still. It was, like I say, it was really heavily flooded the other day. And look, you can see already, it's quite a fast flowing torrent. So I'll just take this little path here to walk beside the roading and make our way towards the Aldersbrook. Just had a nice chat with a couple of ladies back there who were doing a litter pick around the open ground here, picking up all the things that people have discarded, all the plastic bottles and cups and cans and what have you. They had two big sacks full of it. Brilliant to see that kind of thing. Just volunteers going out of their own fruition on a Monday morning and picking up rubbish in the local area that other people have just tossed away. Brilliant to see. And also at this point I should give a shout out to the fantastic, brilliant Friends of the River Roading who, I think they take a boat along the roading and clean it up from the, uh, from the water level. Again, just a volunteer organisation which are helping maintain our environment and doing fantastic work. You can find the Friends of the River Roading on uh, Facebook. Aldersbrook comes off the roading a little way along here and then goes in a really big wide loop and rejoins the roading the other side of the, uh, just near the bridge, Ilford Bridge at the beginning of Ilford Hill. The river roading is actually tidal, I think, up to about this point here. We're opposite uh, Ilford Golf Course. So I think up to this point, the, uh, the roading is actually tidal, which is an amazing thought, isn't it? Makes its confluence with the Thames down in Barking, which is an important part of our story today. The roading is one of the great rivers of London. They used to uh, sail timber from Epping Forest down here to the wharfs at Ilford. We would then be transported to barking docks. Rivers have stories. And I think the story that this section of the roading and the Aldersbrook wants to tell us is the stories of the, of the pilgrims and the travellers that travelled through this area and stopped at the shrine on Ilford Hill, which is where we're heading today. I guess this just must be sort of storm water running out into the uh, the roading. It's not a tributary that I've ever come across or heard of, but I suppose you don't really know. This bank here to the right, I was told, was built uh, sometime in the post-war period as a, as a part of the flood defences. So it shows you how high the roading could possibly get. One of the things that I find almost quite exciting about standing on the banks of a river like this, particularly when it's running high and fast, 
and you've got all the undergrowth here which has recently been underwater is that it's really like a passage back through time because we change so much of the landscape and the open ground as well even that gets is managed over time you know you have field systems come and go and grazing land comes and go but the rivers keep flowing the rivers keep throwing through the land and as we've seen on our lost rivers of london walks even when we bury them and force them underground into culverts they still play a role in shaping the landscape around them it's really incredible it's a tangible feeling when you stand beside a river this passage this transportation back through the ages it's like the eddies and the swirls of water, and like wrinkles in the fabric of time itself. So we've got this big bend in the river here, with the City of London Cemetery to our right, and the Aldersbrook is going to make its uh, branch off from the roading just around that corner, I think. I did go looking for the Aldersbrook um, one morning about three years ago, I think four years ago. And all I really found was a muddy ditch. I'm pretty sure it must have been the Aldersbrook, but there wasn't really any water in it because I guess it was the summer. And oh, I didn't consider then is the tides because at this point the roading would be tidal, I think. So um, I didn't really feel like I'd found it and only saw a very short section. So I'm really hoping today, really hoping that we're going to see the Aldersbrook with water flowing along it. That's what I've really come out for today and to visit the shrine on Ilford Hill. But I'm really hoping for some water in the Aldersbrook. It's funny when you talk to people around here that walk around here a lot, walk their dogs here, they've not really heard of the Aldersbrook, which is strange. That's several people now I've mentioned it to don't really, don't really know about it. That's why I say it's kind of almost qualifies as a lost river. Regretting not bringing my walking pole with me because I've got to negotiate this muddy bank here which could see me ending up on my rear end but you know so I won't film that. And so I think I can just make out the Aldersbrook where it branches off from the roading there beneath that tree on the right you can see a gap there which must be the Aldersbrook and the water level looks quite high so I'm quite optimistic. Of course then it does run around the golf course, the Ilford Golf Course, part of it sits on a, on a peninsula, I guess, between the Roding and the Aldersbrook. We've hit a bit of a dead end here. The path just runs into this undergrowth. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to double back and go up onto the bank, which is a shame. I wonder if I can get through there though. It's interesting to see how the brambles are growing back already. You can get through here, but you just end up on the path. So I won't bushwhack any further. We'll just go up here to the concrete path and pick up the Aldersbrook a little way along. So there is actually a path that leads beneath the pylon here and I think takes us down to the Aldersbrook. Here you go and here it is. Here's the Aldersbrook full of water. Look at that. Now that is a majestic sight. I've only ever seen it as a narrow little muddy ditch, but this is, this is a proper water course, a proper little river. Isn't that beautiful? The Aldersbrook is alive and well, and here it is. Now that is fantastic. It's almost as if my journey out here today is fulfilled in many, many ways. I really was hoping that the recent flooding and the, and the high water level would fill the Aldersbrook with water. And there it is. I say, when you talk to people about it, and no one around here has heard of it, and people say, I don't know what you mean. Like the ladies back there hadn't heard of it. You start to doubt yourself a little bit, even though it's on all the maps. And like I say, I had seen that ditch, but that's not a ditch, that's a river. It's a proper river. It's fantastic. And I love the way it's marked by the pylon. <laughs> Seems doubly special. Right, we want to see some more of the Aldersbrook as it makes its way now around the edge of uh, Ilford Golf Course. And then it will run parallel with, with Romford Road, the old Roman road 
and rejoin the um, rejoin the river roading. So really, oh, this is this is this is what we live for. This stuff. I think in the summer it'll be pretty difficult to get down here because the brambles will reclaim the riverbank and the water level will drop. So it's a great winter walk. I suppose the natural assumption is to think that the name of the river must have come from the fact that there were alder trees here or maybe there still are alder trees or I don't know how you pronounce it, I pronounce it alder anyway. And alder is an interesting, it's, an, it's derived from an old English word, I think I'll put it up on the screen, like alos or alios, gives us the name alder. And the bark of the alder tree had a number of uses. It was, um, it was an inf anti-inflammatory and, and the alder is found across North America and Central America, across Europe. And in a lot of those cultures, they use the bark as an anti-inflammatory. As, a, as a, cor a cure, it has medicinal uses. And uh, looking on Wikipedia, it says, it's interesting that it says the, the piles, the wooden piles on which Venice was built, were built with alder wood. So it's a it's a wood with both healing properties like water and links to water. It's a water tree in my mind. <laughs> it's a tree inherently linked to this particular water course though. Now pushed away from the river, walk along this long muddy path that runs alongside the City of London Cemetery, the Great Necropolis. This part of the allotments here it looks as though it's uh, not in use. It looks very overgrown. The sheds have rotted and fallen down. There's lots of debris in the undergrowth. I wonder what's happened here. There's a bit more life at this end. Beside the allotments, we can get back beside the soothing waters of the Alders Brook. You can see the towers of Ilford through the trees there. That's where we're bound. So we carry on along this muddy path here. The river's to our left. The other side of these brambles, we can't really get through to it up here, but we will see it again quite shortly. Here it is, running beside the golf course, tranquil little brook. This is interesting here, it looks like the river is being dammed very slightly it runs beneath the railway bridge. And you can see how it's reduced in scale and size from this point onwards. More water joining the Aldous Brook here. I guess this is just runoff from the streets and the roads. Can't smell any sewage or anything here, so the water seems pretty clean. The Aldersbrook is going to go under that bridge there and into the streets. And we're going to take this little, uh, this little underpass here beneath the railway lines and pick it up off the Romford Road. So you can see here that this uh, little path here is part of the Roding Valley Way. The wonderful Roding Valley Way. 
a little map there. Shows you where we are. And we've crossed the boroughs now. We've left Redbridge and entered the London Borough of Newham. So the river is running behind that kind of concrete fence there at the end of this uh, little close in this estate. So I wonder if we can have a little peer over the have a peer over the wall and see what's there. We come out onto Romford Road, one of the great thoroughfares of London. Romford Road is a Roman road, as the old maps are very keen to point out. In fact, the words Roman Road are actually bigger than the words Romford Road. And it's a, a great road of stories. You can imagine the Roman legions coming out through here. I think this led to, to Colchester, the Roman road to Colchester. But it was also an important part of the story of William the Conqueror who set up his winter quarters at Barking Abbey in January 1067, just a few weeks after he'd been crowned King of England. And this would have been the route that both his troops took in and out of London, not just his troops, the members of his court and his retinue, but also the route that a lot of the nobles would have taken when they came out to pledge loyalty to William at his camp out in Barking Abbey. And Barking Abbey is an important part of the story of the shrine that we're about to visit. My, uh, my other favourite reference to Romford Road and it's part of its story is the great Elizabethan jester Will Kemp. And he, for the, for the sake of a bet, he said he would dance from London to Norwich. And he did and he came along the Romford Road and apparently there were great crowds all along the Romford Road through Stratford. Apparently the crowds were so big at Stratford that some of the contemporary chroniclers said they had to travel along the road to Ilford to get a spot where they could actually see the famous jester dancing along the road on his way to Norwich. What a, what a great story, what a great spectacle. So if we just turn off Romford Road along Lug Approach towards the uh, Tunnelling and Underground Construction Academy. It's an intriguing place. We should get another view of the Aldersbrook just before it makes its confluence with the roading. And here it is, the beautiful little Aldersbrook. Pretty depressing to see all the rubbish that's discarded along its banks there. The deity of the roading and the Aldersbrook will be very unhappy about that. The Aldersbrook makes its confluence with the roading just underneath the North Circular up there. So there's a gate that leads to the riverbank, but you can see here it says restricted access. The soil in this area contains Japanese knotweed and is being treated. Do not enter. We will not enter. The name Ilford could come from the Anglo-Saxon Eel Ford, the Eeld meaning Old Ford across the roading. However, the lower stretches of the roading were known as the Heil. Ilford was spelt Eelford with a Y and then Heilford from 1234. This would appear to be the most likely origin of the name of Ilford. This is a pretty powerful location as the North Circular goes across the river roading and crosses this road here at the bottom of Ilford Hill. And here we have the roading. You can just see there on the left, just past those ducks, is where the Aldersbrook makes its confluence with the roading. A magical location. So as we make our way up Ilford Hill now, we enter into the territory of one of my favourite old London books, The Outer Circle, Rambles in Remote London by Thomas Burke, published in 1921, I think. He didn't like Ilford. He said to go to Ilford is a fool's act of the Romford Road. 
he said the Romford Road is very long and very lackadaisical. It's as if the Romford Road doesn't want to get to Romford. Ilford is the focus of a lot of uh, new development, a lot of, like a lot of the eastern towns like Barking. Some of the new development isn't particularly uh, appealing, I would say. The Aldersbrook was always leading us to one special location. It's just up here on Ilford Hill, an ancient holy shrine. Ilford Conservative Club doesn't look in very good, uh, very good nick. It looks like it's not been used for some time. So just here, in the top of Ilford Hill, we have Ilford Hospital Chapel. It looks as if the gate is open. So I'll just go inside. And here it is. You would never think that lying or just beside that hustle and bustle is this old 12th century chapel here. So the hospital chapel here is dedicated to St Mary and St Thomas the Martyr, Thomas Beckett. I think that's one of the reasons that travellers along this road in the Middle Ages would stop at the shrine here to pay homage to St Thomas. It was established around the year 1140 by the, uh, by the Abbess of Barking as a um, leper hospital. I think there were 13 lepers that were cared for here and it's said that King David came to visit his sister here, who I think was Queen Maud, I'll correct that if it's wrong, and he found her bathing the feet of the lepers. It's a really special place. conclusion to that walk. Probably, <laughs> I should probably pop my face mask off. What a beautiful conclusion to that magical walk. Seems uh, the, the Aldersbrook was leading us to that, that shrine there, the hospital chapel on Ilford Hill, site of ancient worship. Going along Mill Road here, I'm avoiding central Ilford and I'm just going to meander my way home through One Step Park. I better stop this now because I need to get across this road in one piece. I've never actually been down here before and I've got to be honest, it doesn't seem very promising does it? That looks quite intimidating but there you go, let's give it a go. There's not a lot of clearance between that van's wing mirror and my, and my head. <laughs> it's uncomfortably close. Anyway, that's the end of the walk. So I'm going to stroll through the streets of Cranbrook and back across One Step Park. I'll post the link to my Cranbrook walk below, which passes through here. So I just want to say a massive thank you again for joining me on that really beguiling, illuminating, enchanting walk from those prehistoric sites on Wanstead Flats, which were incredible, weren't they? And then along the beautiful calming waters of the Aldersbrook. The Aldersbrook is no longer lost. The Aldersbrook is alive and well. And so, as I always like to say, and will continue to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And indeed, wherever that may be, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs>